Hi, everybody. This is Tasha with Prep For It. And joining me today is from Wiley Living, Trish and Dudley Wiley. And then, of course, my wonderful co host, Miss Mouse Toes. Yes. The hostess with the mostest. And um, we're going to get with Wiley Living on on talking about their channel and some some preps, uh, prepping skills that that they see that we need to be working on as a as a whole group as, as a society. Um, but first, quick reminder: uh, let me get into my banners here so I can give you the food challenge um, hashtag. Remember, this coming Saturday is going to be the last day. 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern is the last. Um, all video entries for my food challenge have to be in by then. I have all of the ones that have been done so far on a playlist on my channel called Exactly This. Press Prep for it Food Challenge. So if you want to see all the videos entered, go over to my channel, go down to my playlist, and click on the Prep for it Food Challenge. You can see them all. Y'all are going to help me judge these. The audience is. So I need the audience to participate, okay? So you need to be here. We will do the voting Sunday, okay? Sunday we will do the voting, and that will be um, on my decompression time, which is 5 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Eastern, okay? So everybody that, that's um, involved needs to come as well that have done videos, if at all possible, because... The first place winner is going to get to pick their prize, and then we'll go down in order. Um, so you need to be here in order to pick which prize you have so we're not holding everybody up. So try to be here if you can. If you can't, at least be available for me to text you or something. All right. And so make your videos. The food challenge is basically why um, uh, shelf staples foods that are under $5.00. Or under ten dollars, okay. Like if you're cooking for a family, uh, shelf stable meal that you can cook for your family. Um, you can use regular milk because you can also do it with powdered milk if you need to. You can do eggs because you can do it with powdered eggs if you want to. Um, I mean, you can't do it like you can even do fresh eggs because the fresh eggs can be water glass. So anything that is shelf stable until you open it up, okay. Um, and you may have to refrigerate it afterwards, but most foods that are cooked have to be refrigerated afterwards. That's just how it is. So anyway, um, if anybody has any questions, you can email me at callmecrazy at gmail.com. Remember, the prizes are a pantry can of uh, freeze-dried chicken from Sandra Moody, nice. uh, Thrive Life, which is Awesome. Um, yes. Bruce from Backwoods Law has offered to do a <laughs> Bruce from Backwoods Woods Law has offered to uh, do some leather work for somebody, either make some coasters or do like a knife sheath. Um, and then I have some essential oils. I'll be going through those this week and pulling out the ones that I have numerous of that are unopened and ready to go. So I'll put pictures of those on my community page this week. And then everybody can um, kind of look through those through the week and be thinking in your head what you might want to claim. Okay. My goal is that everybody that, that participated gets something um, because I appreciate y'all doing this. There hasn't been a lot of interest or enthusiasm about it but those that have done it i've really appreciated and it's all just about learning to do things with our preps cooking with our preps so all righty and of course i have my regular um pain um pain and cro chronic pain chronic illness support group on sundays the hour before decompression time that's four central five eastern and um, but that is private for now. I will do another poll coming up soon. But right now, those are still private. So if you want to be involved in those, either on the panel or on the side chat, you have to uh, email me and let me know that. Okay? And don't go by just telling me on the side chat because I forget. Okay? This woman has memory issues sometimes. So <laughs> email me. Still email me. Okay? All right. 
Now, <laughs> so um, I wanted Trish and Dudley to come on. I totally hounded Trish like crazy because she was showing us on our little Marco Polo app all the wonderful things she was doing. And I was like, why don't you have a channel? Sandra Moody was like, why aren't you doing a channel? Everybody was like, Trish, hello. You've been doing this for years, but you're not putting it out there so other people can learn from you. Share your wonderful skills, woman. So she did. And I'm so glad she did. And Dudley does an amazing job of editing. He really does. He does an amazing job. So tell us a little bit about how long you've been canning, preserving, mm -hmm. doing preparedness things and homesteading things? Um, for me, I haven't canned personally until what, 11, six years ago. Yeah, roughly six years ago. I canned with my dad when I was little. He had a garden. So I would can like tomatoes and pickle okra or something with him when I was little, but I never really did it myself per se. Um, and I don't really honestly know what got me triggered to start canning other than I think it was the apples. We got a ton of apples. Yes, you made apples. And I made a whole bunch of applesauce. And then I was just like, okay. Um, then I started growing. Then you got bit by the bug. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh -huh. And I was able, because when we moved here, this is three quarter, quarter acres here. Yeah. You know, I was able to grow a pretty good garden. So I was like, okay, I want to start preserving what we're growing because the other places we lived had teeny tiny yards and there's just, you know, it was just pain. Um, and uh, so that year after I canned up all the applesauce and I did all, all that and uh, I was like, all right, everybody's like, what do you want for Christmas? I said, I want a water. I want a pressure canner. And they're like, what? And I said, I want a pressure canner. I had that thing for four years before I actually busted the, the seal on the box to get it out. Cause I was like, <laughs> All these horror stories running through my head, you know, you're gonna blow your face off and all this. <laughs> yes. And I was just like, okay. And then last year, I think it was last year or the year before last year, I'm like watching all these people can all this stuff and it looks really good. And I was like, all right, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna quit being a chicken. I'm just gonna do it. So I did. And I have a granddaughter who is my shadow. Wherever I'm at, she's there. And so she's like, I want to help. I want to help. And so we just started canning together and I don't let her do anything with the hot, you know, like the hot water or any of that. She's not allowed to do any of that. But um, if I'm canning beans and I, and I do a, um, a dry can, you know, with the dry beans, um, I'll let her put the beans in and the seasonings or whatnot. And then I'll take over from there and put yeah, it. Yeah, she there. helps you pre pick the vegetables. She yes, helps she you prep the place. vegetables and wash them and all of mm -hmm. that stuff. Yeah, she, she helps you with everything that she can possibly help you with, and she gets very angry with you when you don't let her do the hot part. Yes, and she, she does. doesn't understand yet and comprehend why Nana doesn't let you do that. But <laughs> it's for her safety. But I love that you completely involve the kids. You you take mm -hmm. them out there. You're constantly teaching them about the plants mm -hmm. everything from start to finish the whole life cycle from from planting them in the ground to taking mm -hmm. care of them to harvesting and then to mm -hmm. harvesting the seeds at the end of the season and saving them for the following year i mean you teach them the whole life cycle of the plant and i just love that yeah um, the different insects that eat all of our yummy vegetables yeah. they don't mm -hmm. get and, and ways to fight them off mm -hmm. Yeah, and the wildlife, you know, the different wildlife. We get rabbits that'll come eat up stuff. And yeah. cats that think it's a cat box or, you know, it's just, you know, so. Um, but they actually put the seeds in the ground, too. So we, 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 we yeah. go through the whole process of that. Um, I do sewing and can, uh, crocheting as well and kind of difficult to let them help with those aspects of things because they want to hold the yarn while I'm crocheting and they get the tension <laughs> too tight and, and it's a tug of war. And so that don't work out so well for me all the time. And then with the sewing, you know, Lydia wants to hold this, the, the, um, uh, the pin cushion and hand me the needles and I kind of got sick of getting stabbed with needles. So <laughs> those things, or she wants to cut out the pattern pieces and stuff like that. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, 
you know, she's sick. She don't quite have her, her skills right. done. So, and, and the equipment I use for sewing isn't, it, you know, it's just not safe for a six year old. So those things she does not get to do. She can watch, but she's not going to go through those processes. So. Yeah. But it's great for them to, to learn and like a, like even a little simple cross stitch or something like that, them, to, them learning how to do stuff like that and mm -hmm. feeling like they're, they're learning a valuable skill and they are it's skills that have been lost to most people. I mean, there are still yeah. sewers and quilters out there, mm -hmm. people that know how to mend like a sock, if it's, you know, darn a sock or, or, so on a button or replace a zipper but for the most part that's a skill that's been highly lost i mean that's yeah. something somebody in every household would normally know how to do back in the day and now it's it's an it's almost a lost art in a sense mm -hmm. uh, there's a few people still keeping it alive but i think it's amazing um the things that we don't think of i mean it's not you know when especially men when men Mm -hmm. prep men typically want to prep like uh oh no there sorry uh -oh. i lost it when <laughs> men prep they typically want to prep like glamorous stuff you know like the heavy equipment and uh, the machinery and the the glam stuff you know and women tend to think more on the practical side mm -hmm. of things like the everyday things that go wrong. And uh, so it's good to have a pair working yeah. together because there are pieces. It's like a puzzle. Like yeah. I, I may see something that my husband doesn't see or vice versa. And same for mouse and bird, you know, the, they, they can help work off of each other. So it's good in any community, even like on here to have both perspectives as well. But prepping is, I mean, sewing isn't something that most preppers think a lot about. But, I mean, you could be learning how to patch things like tents and tarps and, you know, vital equipment that you need, like heavy-duty coats and things like that, that, you know, winter winter gear that you have to have. Mm -hmm. So all of those things, you know, um, make a big difference. Um, is there any other things that like maybe not necessarily glamorous, but things that you think that people should really be um, working on their skills for prepping? Right. Um, and one thing I forgot to mention was I also teach them wild edibles. So we forage in our yard a lot too. So, um, but um, with, with sewing, you're going to want, diff there's just, depends on your, your, experience where you want to go with it um you can get your basic little sewing kits you can pick these up anywhere dollar tree dollar general walmart um you can also make your own now i find in these these pre-made sewing kits the thread is crap i'm just gonna tell you yeah, yeah it is um so if you want to pick out you know basic colors that you know the majority of your clothing or whatever if you go over to like the crochet area of the craft area, they're going to have these little plastic flat pieces. Some of them will even come with a little ring attached and you can take the good thread and wrap it up on that stuff. They're not going to take up a lot of space. It's not going to be as bulky as a, as a uh, spool of thread. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something that you can slide into, you know, your little tin cans or whatever you want to save. Um, you generally, Sorry about the noise. You can pick up a, a little thing of needles that's not very, it's not very bulky or anything. Those are, are nice to have. What? Hey, Diggs. Um, I, I like drew, plastic holders for safety yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like cotton over the all purpose. The all purpose phrase real easy. It's just it's a total pain in the butt. But anyways, it, cotton's gonna cost a little more. Um, you can pick up little do hickeys, you know, to thread the needles if you're like me and going blind. I had <laughs> uh you can get those one kind of needles that actually have the little hook on the edge to where you hook the thread on it and you don't even have to have the little right. but those are more it's, expensive. It's, 
basically I want you're willing to spend, you know, yeah. Yeah. it's just, it's, but I had one of these little silver dudes, you know, you put your thread in there, put it through the eye. Okay. I, I broke it. It's they're cheap. They're crap. I don't recommend those. If you want your kit to last, spend a little bit of extra and get the appropriate stuff. Um, these scissors junk. Okay. No, yeah. This is the biggest joke ever. <laughs> I, I didn't think it was going to cut baby hair, to be honest. So right. they sell little scissors that actually will fold up inside themselves, and they're pretty pretty decent. They're okay. Yeah, Dilly just broke them. So anyway, um, <laughs> it, it's... <laughs> yeah, it's better to put it put your own pre-made kit in. I'll be right back while you're showing that. I wanted to show something. Okay, it absolutely is, because if you're relying on this kit right here, you're, you're gonna up on a pinch. Oh. I wouldn't trust it in a pinch, but I've sewn for a long time and I know what's good and what's not. Um, but it can be a starting point, right? And then as someone yeah. then can slowly replace it. I like the idea of using yeah. the holder for it too. It's a good idea. It's a, it gives you a starting place, you know, what kind of things to look for. Um, having a small little thing of just safety pins because maybe. Maybe you're out and you don't have time to sit down and sew something so you can just safety pin it to get to keep moving until you can get to where you can sew it and stuff. Um, you know, as far as your your on the go kind of thing, you get mm -hmm. little thimbles. This is plastic, and I got fat hands, and this this won't even go over my fingers. So, you know, um, buttons. You know, have a few extra buttons of some sort. You know, like if you miss a button or whatever, or if you can find the button and just tuck it away. And really, is that your sewing kit? This is, um, <laughs> this was a purchase that I made that, uh, no, uh oh, <laughs> that ain't good. I think she just kicked herself off her own string. <laughs> <laughs> She'll be back. I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> Sorry, I was <laughs> trying to do it with the left hand, and the left hand doesn't work. But see how it's on stands? Yeah. Oh, wow. And this accordion's out. Lip top's open. Yeah. Cool. Those are beautiful. Yeah, they are neat. Um, and it's got the pin cushion built in the top. Yes. I love this. And I spent a little more money on it, but... I felt like um, it's something I use and, you know, because I fix socks and, right. and stuff like that all the time. And so I can just carry it in, use what I need to mm -hmm. use, put stuff right back and carry it in the other room. <laughs> but um, it doesn't have to be that fancy. Because I don't have a designated sewing area, I have a toolbox. I just took a cheap little toolbox and I stuff all my crap in it. And that works mm -hmm. too. And we go. Um, so that this is something for like you know get out of dodge scenario. Now if you're at home, you're not going anywhere. Um, I have a tr an old uh, treadle sewing machine that was my great grandmother's. Oh, so that's so cool. I can use it. The cabinet's starting to fall apart, so I got to be real careful with it. So um, collect scissors. I have you know you want good scissors. You don't want cheapo scissors. Um, I also use something like this where your blade slides up. Anybody who quilts is going to be okay. So I can't get it to work. Okay. Anybody who quilts is going to be familiar with this. Yes. This is so much easier on me because mm -hmm. I've had carpet tunnel for cutting out patterns than scissors. So yes, I love those. That, um, on scissors, real quick, yes, you, need, you need to mark them. You will die if you take my sewing scissors yes. because my good sewing scissors that I spent like $27 on because mm -hmm. I wanted a really good pair. Guess where they are now? And they're all chipped up this in my husband's tool box out in yes. the barn. Oh. This is my second pair because somebody decided that trying with them would be a nice idea and broke the tip off. So you don't have yeah. to. And then you want your seam ripper. You want mm -hmm. a good one. Yes. I honestly would have extras of these because they just don't make 
these tips snap off in a heartbeat, especially yeah. if you're dealing with denim or anything that's real heavy material. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're going to want multiple patterns, different sizes, right? So this, I, ha I learned a trick when I was younger on how to keep that pattern intact without actually cutting it. Oh. Wes, Wax scissors paper. are not for construction paper. <laughs> Wax paper is your friend if you're sewing. You lay that out over your pattern. I found the cheapest, junkiest pens are the ones that work the best on wax paper. You just trace that out, and then you've got that pattern to continue as they grow instead of cutting it. Because anybody who sews, they know they got they lose half their pattern every time they use it. So that is brilliant, Trish. Mm -hmm. um, so. Get you wax paper. This is what a dollar something, you know. It's not real expensive. It doesn't take up a lot of space, but you can reuse, you know, your patterns over and over again. Um, and so, yeah, freezer paper would work good. You know, anything, anything that that's heavier than your tissue paper that come in your patterns and transparent. Yeah, yeah he's pulling it out. Here's like. One of the pieces, you know, I've I've traced it, I've marked all of it. It's time consuming. Worth it. But it just it saves. It saves. I can make her this dress, you know, three or four years down the road. Yeah. Um, and it saves your patterns. Um, when she outgrows that dress, I know I can donate that and it's gonna be a value still to somebody because I haven't made it one specific size. It still has all the different sizes available to him so i bet they did will i bet they did that is yeah. an ingenious idea trish that really is and mouse toes morgan wants a picture of the trivet she yeah. sent you i'll do it <laughs> um just i'm not sure if trish read it or not but will from just in time preparedness mm -hmm. info passed away a couple of hours ago no, okay who was it again J-I-T preparedness in dash info will he passed away. So we'll be praying for his family. I hate to hear that. I knew his health had continued to decline. Um, he will definitely be missed um, in the community for sure. Um, so everybody, please be praying for his family. Um, add him to our prayer list, uh, their family yeah. to the prayer list Saturday. Yeah. He said will. Yeah. Will. Just in time preparedness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He changed it to J I T preparedness dash info. Okay. Well, Morgan, how come I haven't received trivets yet then? Huh? 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 I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Morgan. <laughs> you might that tells really you where I rank. <laughs> um, Good. So, so uh, any other um, sewing stuff or tips or tricks that you have the um darning the socks my dad was navy so he would come in with a basket of socks and a tennis ball here you go and i <laughs> sit there all day tennis ball stuck in the sock sewing up the toes or the heel <laughs> or whatnot you know trying to to do that um i personally can't stand wearing darn socks it just it's a sensory thing that i have I, so but you know I had to sew on, uh, I had to help him a few times sew on some patterns on his uniform, patterns, sorry, patches onto his uniform and stuff. So yeah. you want good, strong needles. Um, That's I'm, not easy either. You have to have them perfectly on that uniform. Yeah. 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 And the stitches have to be, well, maybe not with a, my dad was one of those detail oriented people. So, uh -huh. um, but you have to have a stout needle because um, those patches are real thick. They're really heavy. Yes. So, um, they're not the easiest to, uh, push a needle through. So, but I, you know, I did, um, straight pins. You're going to want straight pins to pin your patterns together. Um, you don't always have to, um, have a pattern per se to sew your clothes. If you have a favorite shirt and it's mm -hmm. got a big bleach spot from cleaning or whatever, carefully take it apart find you some material that you like of the same thing and, and trace, uh, it trace it out. And yeah. So you're going to, you know, you, you, you can get um, the marking pens or pencils. Mm -hmm. 
Now I have found some, and I can't remember the brand name. They don't come out when you wash them. Just saying. Oh, no. I was a little bit perturbed over oh. that. Um, oh no! So you got to be careful. You got to check your quality, and and I know the way a lot of like Walmart sells things nowadays. You can't really check the quality until you get it home. Right. Just, yeah. Um, but. Yeah, I guess clips like this might be might work too to help like hold stuff together, like while you're cutting out your mm, yeah. patterns and stuff. Um, CRs, ice binder clips. That or they're like me and cut the little tabs off. Oh, <laughs> the, yeah, the triangles. Yeah. Um, so there's, I find there's stuff that they sell in the sewing section that I never even use. Um, so, but things like newspaper can be used for patterns. I've seen people use toilet paper. I know that's funny right now, considering the times, but yeah. <laughs> seen people use toilet paper and they just taped it all together until, you know, they got their pattern worked out the way they wanted it. So it, you just, you know, being creative and stuff. Um, yeah. So, and you don't have to get, like I said, I, Tasha has her, her really cool box. I have a sewing box like that. It's a small one, you know, where you open it up and, Pink mm -hmm. on the top and stuff. But I just grabbed my toolbox. I'm just like, <laughs> I, I got it stashed full of zippers and elastic. Um, I had collected so much crap from sewing because my grandmother sewed, my great aunt sewed, my great grandma sewed. And I was the only one that picked up any of those skills. So when they all passed on, it all compiled onto me. I had to go get one of those great big Sterilite three drawer stack. Yes. Things. Yeah. So I've got and one like, of those full. And yeah, and people <laughs> can get a lot of stuff. I know Kaylin's mentioned it before. Thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales. You can get yep. stuff like that. Um, Lots of those places. And most people overlook that stuff. Yeah. Every and time we go to the thrift store, if there's buttons or zippers and the elastic's good, I buy it all. Just and in material sometimes. You I mean, mm -hmm. you got to watch because if it's been particularly dusty, the dust mites can have, you know, caused it to the material to degrade to grade and it'll look like it's okay but when you wash it it'll just fall right. apart so you have yeah. to be careful yeah yeah so i yeah we pick up a lot of those things at the thrift stores um our thrift store don't always have good material it's always the old 70s polyester so <laughs> i'll uh, pass on that stuff but um all even small scraps of material are good to have because you can make quilts, you know, and people are going to need blankets and things, you know, if there's no power, if you can hand sew, you know, may not yeah. be beautiful, but, you know, that's how clothes were made way back in the day. It was all hand yeah. sewn. So. Yeah. I mean, well, I mean, you know, they, they started putting patterns on the, on the flower sacks so that, you know, cause they noticed people were making clothes in the depression times and stuff out of flower sacks. So they started putting pretty flowers and different things on, on flower sacks. So, I mean, ingenuity is built into us. We just have to rediscover that, you know, yes. um, and them. not yeah. think everything has to be ready made and quit, quit um, thinking it's if the world is ending, if you can't find it on the shelf, you got to yeah. learn how to be creative and, and come up with it yourself, you know? Well, both my grandparents were raised during the Great Depression, like most people my age, right? Yeah. And so I remember when my mom and dad's, or my mom's mom and dad moved back from California. They came back with tons of butter bowls, TV dinner trays. And it's like, why the hell did yeah. you move this stuff across country? It's trash, you know, but no, not to my grandpa, you know, because he was at the mindset and so was my grandmother. They didn't know when the bottom was going to drop out. Right. Those were his flower pots. Those were his containers for nuts and bolts and screws. I mean, mm -hmm. so. Um, that the was the never waste yeah. era, you know, oh, yeah. repurpose everything, you yeah. know, and, and that's uh, Joe's grandma was a lot like that. And she was like that with bread sacks and yeah. like hamburger bun sacks and yep. stuff like that. Like she had one cabinet that was just stuffed full of yeah. all of those, you know, um, 
And, but to her, it wasn't, it wasn't trash. It was mm -hmm. stuff that she reused and she used yes. them all the time. Like <laughs> when she was packing up a sandwich for my father-in-law to go out in the field to, to, you know, take with him if he was haying or whatever, she would pull oh, one of those out and put the sandwich in there instead of a, a reusable or, or like a Ziploc bag. You know, she would reuse the stuff that she could. Yep. And you can put them on your feet if you got a leaky shoe and keep your feet mm -hmm. dry. And, and the multiple uses. I'm a huge, I save every bread tie that comes through my door. It's like, I throw it away because mm -hmm. they're good for tying up cables or ropes or whatever, you know, just there's multiple uses. So I did pick up on that mindset. I live in Missouri. So we go through tornadoes and ice storms. You know, somebody took out the power pole because they had a car accident squirrel got fried and then you know so we're all the time in and out with power so it's and it's been my whole life so it was always outside of the box you know we um we've got the oil lamps yeah karen says she uses butter bowls to send left for leftovers home with the kids or to a neighbor's house or whatever you know yeah um, and it says, I am still of that mindset. Use it up, wear it mm -hmm. out, make it or do it yeah. out. So then, and so that's, you know, that's a lot how I was raised. You know, we, I remember when I was the, the first ice storm I can remember, um, my mom and dad had like just got this double wide trailer house and it had a built in fireplace in it. And the power got knocked out because we had a bad ice storm. And, Mom was all about all electric. And I remember right then my dad said, never again. As soon as yep. power's coming on, you're getting a gas hot water heater. And um, she's like, well, she would never go with a gas stove. She just wouldn't. So, but he made sure that there was a gas hot water heater. And me and my dad were the opinion, yes, gas stove, because you can still cook. So he cooked all of our meals in the fireplace. So... You know, I know. Yeah. So, and I grew and up. Skill. Like we were talking about this behind scenes, cooking <laughs> over an open fire is not yeah. always as easy as people think, especially yeah. if you're having to be careful not to burn something or scorch something. Yeah. Like or on our camping trip, when I did our hobo dinners, <laughs> it got a little scorched. Mine was not burnt, but okay, mine was like, tar coal on the bottom oh, <laughs> of course, not, i was busy doing other things and so mine was the last to come out but mine was like charcoal <laughs> hey, you know, you're gonna you're gonna be out there in 90 degree weather with 90 percent humidity over this open fire it's gonna be hotter than 80s you know and so we've done that and uh we've had a tornado hit not too far from us where it took power out for two weeks here this oh, yeah. the substation that was the middle of summer it yep. was hot yeah. There was no, you know, going to the store because guess what? Store had no power. There was none of that. Yeah. None. But because of the way I was raised to always have extra on hand, um, as soon as the power went out, first thing I did was cooler, threw everything I could in the cooler. Mm -hmm. um, and we used that until there was no more, mm -hmm. you know. There was your smaller like convenience stores that had generators. So they still had ice or something like that. So you were still able to get smaller things, you know, but um, yeah, we lived out of a cooler for two weeks. So did the rest of the town. So did the rest of the community, there was like uh, three counties in right here that didn't have power for a while because of that tornado. So it was hot. It was really hot. So yeah. You know, kids were miserable because there was no fans to stay cool. There was no TV to watch. And it was, uh, well, there's coloring books and crayons. You know, go outside and play, whatever, you know, figure it out. But, mm -hmm. and uh, so, yeah. So I raised, I learned from raising my two. So now that I'm raising my grandkids, we don't do TV. The only TV time they get is if it's educational time for school. Other than that, if they've done good, good behavior kind of thing. They'll get to watch a DVD player or something, but there's no actual TV. Nothing. We're not doing that. They get up and work, you know, they have chores. My two year old grandson puts his own dirty clothes in the laundry hamper. He puts nice. his own toys up in his stuff. Grandma's old. Grandma's tired. <laughs> You're not broken yet. Yeah. So 
because I was it like, doesn't hurt them to learn those skills as long as you don't have him like just down on all fours scrubbing the floor for hours on end or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you know, um, now my family thinks that you know because I'm teaching them old skills and modern world that I'm insane and well they don't need to be doing stuff like that and all this you know and it's like yeah you know when our washer broke those three kids were in the bathtub washing laundry right along yeah. with me <laughs> they yeah. were, but it was, hot, it was hot outside that day and I was like okay they were just like can we go play in the water hose and I was like, better yet, let's go do laundry. So I put them in the bathtub and their little <laughs> babies were washing my clothes and we were grabbing everything. I bet and you I, had fun though too. They did. They had a lot yeah. of fun. So my bathroom was total mess when we got done because kids like the splash, but we got the laundry done. <laughs> there you go. A suburban says, Wiley Living, you're younger than me. Thanks, pal. Rolling on my floor, rolling on the floor, <laughs> laughing my butt off. I love you, Suburban. No, I, mean, I mean, I'm old in the sense that my body's just worn out and tired, and I can't do the things that I used to do when I was younger. You know, old old to me is a state of mind, not necessarily a number. So, And I have my days where oh, I'm ready to get off this train. And so, Good night, Morgan. Thanks for coming in, girl. Love you. And you know I was just teasing about the, about the trivets, you know. I'm just giving you a hard time. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, I think that is a great. Hi, sweetie. Hi, Tessa. Hi, Lydia. Hi, go, go, go. Hi. Um, Sorry. Older school. Hey, Nina. Good to see you. Discover Sustainable. Um, uh, old skills in a, in a modern world. I, I like that because that's true. But people are too dependent on the modern world part of things yeah. you know it it just like here like you talked about the power going out in your area power's gone out in our area for uh, over two weeks yeah. here you know because and that's something that happens when we get ice storms a lot of times that happens hi Sita well, um, like we went on our camping trip our first night on a camping trip it got down to 39 degrees that night oh we were in a tent yeah I used terracotta pots and a candle. Let me tell you, I stayed warm. Nice. Yep. <laughs> I used you. Hey, Betty. Good to see you, girl. Hadn't seen so, you in a while. Nothing's, it's only, it's only as hard as what you make it out to be. That's what I'm feeling. Yeah, and, and it's your mindset, too. If you're oh, like, yes. oh, my gosh, the power's out. This is the end of the world. This is going to be miserable. Well, yeah, it's going to be miserable. But you can... Mm -hmm. Instead of dwelling on that, let's focus yeah. on, hey, what can we do to make this better, you know? Well, that's um, I show the, the grandkids. Um, if we lose power during the day, all right, we got to get cleaning. So we do all the cleaning we can possibly do while there's sunlight using natural light. That way at night when it's getting dark, we just sit and veg or go to bed or, what you know, whatever, depending on the time because – yeah, five o'clock. It's dark, but it's not bedtime. So, yeah. you know, so you, you take you have to go with the flow of the thing. If you you know you don't want to be cleaning in the midnight, burning up all your lamp oil and stuff. It's, mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense. So you got to yeah. work with, with your time frames and everything else. Well, you look back and even like I I like to watch like the older shows like the Waltons and stuff when they're mm -hmm. kicking back and all. And you know when they, they got they rose early when the sun come up they they arose before the sun come up. Mm -hmm. got the breakfast and got their day started they'd go to bed with the chickens <clears throat> after dark they may mm -hmm. be up just a little while after but that was it then it's time for bed and you know we did a lot of that here too whenever whenever our power was out we would do what we needed to get done during the day right so that when it came nighttime and that would be you yeah. know I may go to some extreme with my grandkids and, but it's not in this, it's not to hurt them. I don't want them to rely solely on battery operated things, lamp oils and things like that, because 
you know, it may come a day. Those just aren't there no more. And it yeah. doesn't matter how much you stock up on it or whatever else. They're just not in a long, long term shift event. Yeah. It's not going to be available anymore. After a so while, that, things wear out. Yeah. Yeah. So I want them to be where they can still maintain. And I don't know about the ratio, but I have a six year old, five year old, and two year old. The last thing I need with those three rest around the house is lamp oil and candles burning. Yes. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to be careful. With so, that. um, you know, we do have battery operated things just so, but we don't pull a lot of that stuff out all the time because mm -hmm. I don't want them dependent, dependent I mean, on that. Our, our society is far too dependent on too much stuff as it is. Yeah. I'm too dependent on things. I'm too dependent on a lot of things. And it kicks me in the butt. I'm dependent on you. You depend on me. Yeah. That's nice. And so I'm trying to I'm trying to you know establish some kind of it's not the end of the world. Oh my battery died. I'm it's not the end of the world. I can still right. think I just gotta go about this in a different manner. So um so that, I mean that's what we do. I, it's um well, you're teaching them to use the light, right? Like if you've got to get up, you need the yeah. best light to hand. So mm -hmm. something they'll know I'm going to do that in the morning, not in the afternoon when, yeah. the, you know, shady the, under the, the lighting, the weather, all of that mm -hmm. stuff predicts your schedule. It's I mean, not, that's how it was done back then, you know? Yes. Yeah. So this room that we're in now is their classroom. Um, this is where we do our homeschooling. And it, it's all windows all the way around, except for these short little pieces here behind me. And yes. they're like, oh, we got to turn on the lights. We got to turn on the lights. I'm like, I see just fine. You know, and so, but they're so used to flipping that switch. Got to flip the switch. Got to flip the switch. So I've been teaching them to use the natural sunlight to do their schoolwork and things of that nature. Right. Um, some of them are doing okay and some of them are not. But, you know, I've got my middle grandson has special needs. So it's a little harder for him to understand that we, it's bright daylight. We don't need the light on. He thinks it's got to be on all the time. So Stephanie's new to this. <laughs> Trish finally started a channel. Yay. Yes. Um, it's on her husband's channel. Uh, instead of Dudley Wiley. Now it, it's Wiley living and Trish does most of the videos and Dudley does the editing and he does a beautiful job. They both do an excellent job and you really do need to check that out. If you haven't checked out their channel, I love that they're always including their grandkids. I love that it it's family friendly. Yep. Now their Saturday night chat is like a lot of our late night chats. We get a little off the rails <laughs> with that, but, but the regular videos they put up and everything are all very family friendly and mm -hmm. focused on, on including the children in everything that they do or the majority of things that they do. And so I just love it. And I look forward to learning more from you as, as it goes on. You got a new sub there. Stephanie's got you subbed up now. No, well, thank you, Stephanie. Something mm -hmm. else is, um, I have a lot of health issues and physical limitations. So, and, you know, if I'm able to garden and do all these things and, you know, not be able to move as well as I need mm -hmm. to, it's, it, it maybe will help other people say, okay, exactly. if I just do it one hour into this, you know, break up your one hour, 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night, however you got to do it. It's not impossible. It's just not you know, I, I, I get on these canning frenzies and Dudley knows and I know. Yeah. I'm going to can my brains out today, but I'm <laughs> not moving the next two days. So he knows he's got dinner duty. You know, yeah. I'm done. Yeah. I mean, I'm done. it's just that way. Whenever you're using up that extra energy, it's going to have to give somewhere. It's not like you just have endless energy and is right. uh, endless physical abilities. You have to take time to recoup. I'm the same but way. You're doing it as a team too. Yeah. Yeah. It's very hard to make your own videos, edit them and mm. the whole thing, but you're doing it as a team. When it one gets down, the other one's up. Yeah. It gets pretty crazy in my house because they, they think they're little, you know, Hollywood stars now. So it's like, as soon as I pick oh. up the phone, they're like, I don't be in the video. I don't be in the video. It's That's like, cute. That. But, um, but it's not just the kids that help with the canning and stuff like that. Dudley has done canning yeah. also on your channel. Mm -hmm. So, um, teamwork. Uh, he, he, 
Yeah, ask him about, is it a good thing to can with no shirt on, dear? <laughs> no, grape jelly hurts. Grape jelly yes. hurts. <laughs> It's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll make that notation. Tasha, don't can without a shirt on. <laughs> right. sure. You know, we're not canning in the nude. It's not a good thing. No. <laughs> and it's a good thing he has a shade. Just saying. <laughs> so, um, but something else is, if there is ever a situation where we can't get to the store, I want to make sure that I have lots of this because I want to eat food, not excuses. You know? Yeah. I want my kids to be eating food, not excuses. Another reason I'm teaching them is when I'm old and can't do this anymore, I will know there's somebody going to feed me. <laughs> I'm going to be eating no bugs or nothing crazy. So, yeah. yeah, there you go. I mean, yep. I, like many others, have unintentionally eaten a bug or two. You open your mouth and they fly in. Right? Uh, yeah, well, that happens. That's, that's okay. That, that happens. But I don't want to be like, oh, fried grasshoppers. Yummy. No. <laughs> the entree, right. Oh, no, I'm not about that. So, uh, that yeah, and crickets. You, you couldn't get me to eat a cricket for nothing. I've mm -hmm. I've seen no. parasites come out of crickets that are like this yeah. long. Ew. ew, ew. But you know, I'm I'm not. I mean, I do some crocheting. Deli, you know, crocheting is another thing that you can pick up on. That's a hat that he that he likes to wear. I think it's a dorky hat, but he loves it. Um, when when you Teach yourself how to crochet or learn how to crochet. I like it. Um, that crochet can be used. You can you can crochet so many different things. You can make your own nets. You know, if you can learn macrame, that's another good way oh, to that's learn. That's true. You could. Wait, that is awesome. Can we see that close? Look how cool he looks in that. Oh, here, let me let me pull you all Trish, up. Trish, that's amazing. I love it. That is a beautiful. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Or he can just be from Jamaica, y'all. So, right. <laughs> that so is he can grow pretty. dreads and but yeah, I I've taught myself how to crochet. My grandma used to crochet when I was little, but she wasn't here to teach me as oh. an adult. So I was like, I'm gonna do this. I can crochet sweaters now, I can crochet like cloaks and whatever, you know, um all kinds of different styles of hats, you know. And she can definitely do that in a couple hours. Yeah, when you do a hat, it don't take very long to do it, um, unless you got carpal tunnel and then it takes forever. But crocheting is another awesome skill to have. Knitting is awesome. You know, any of those kinds of because um, the yarn is really super lightweight, uh, so it you can stack that stuff to the ceiling and it's not going to weigh down. Um, <laughs> it looks Irish, yeah. Yeah, he's I am part Irish. He is part Irish, but uh, it's great. Uh, so, and it's, it doesn't take long. What I did to learn to crochet was I went online and I found all the abbreviations, and there was a there was a big old sheet, and it it gave really good instructions on what each abbreviation meant. I printed that out, and then on this side of me, I had my list of abbreviations. This side, I had the pattern. And I would just back and forth, back and forth, and I tear it apart, start over, tear it apart, start over until I finally oh, got. Oh yeah, you know, it's it gets nerve wracking at times, but I mean, if 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 that's what you got to use, that's what you got mm -hmm. to use. So, and you can crochet lots of different things. I've made plarn, where you take cut plastic bags into strips and tie them up, and you can crochet bags and all kinds of stuff with them. And yeah. Then I, can strong. you even get wool yarns? Emma wants to know. Do I? Wool yarn. Can you even yeah. get wool, yeah. wool yeah. yarn anymore? Um, you're gonna find that better on online. Finding it online. Oh, um, you can get where people take uh, what is it, alpaca? Yeah. And they weave that into yarn. Mm -hmm. I've seen people take their stupid dog's hair and make it into yarn. So. Well, we got enough of it. You get a spinning wheel and you can make anything into yarn. Mm -hmm. I've seen people make paper into yarn. So it's the just, way my dogs shed, I would swear they'd all have to be bald at this point, but if they're not. You would think. <laughs> I know. I, I, you know, if dogs needed wigs, I probably could make them on a monthly basis with my dogs. But so there's there's all kinds of things that you can use as as far as fibers go. Um, I watched an interesting video here a while back on YouTube 
where they grow flags and bust it down. It showed every step of them growing the flax, breaking it down and turning it into linen. And I was like, that is so cool. Yes. Yeah. So. Oops. I was going to. Just don't tie yourself. I would say don't tie yourself to one skill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But like right now is the time to learn how to make exactly. that bread. Exactly. Now is the time to teach yourself. Now is the time to learn how to, mm -hmm. so that the skill is already there if you absolutely mm -hmm. need it. I mean, just like you said, crocheting is, is also great for like pot holders, like practical things like pot holders, mm -hmm. hats, mitts, gloves. You can crochet a plant holder, you know, to hang Yeah, I mean, together. there's so many things you can do with all of that. And you can also save a lot of money by making gifts for people with stuff like that okay. as well. So you give and, people some things that are practical for their lives. And right now the mistakes ain't as costly as they would be. Yeah. In a real life situation. Yeah. Yeah. So, and like, um, I also have needles for upholstery. So like if my couch gets a hole in it, I can yeah. use the couch. Mm -hmm. So you can get those so that you can make, make the things, um, go further like your backpack so your backpack gets snag in it you yes know, yeah you're going to want stronger needles to actually and in that case i would want upholstery needles and upholstery thread which is way stronger than cotton yeah okay. and like emma said or not emma fish has said crocheted washcloths are awesome and they're great as dishcloths as well yeah. too yeah. and um you could also use that that plastic yarn the plarn and do something out of that for scrubbing your dishes and things like yeah, that as well mat for your air bed for the can to yeah, or put a mat yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um the plastic makes good little little pot scrubbies if you if you know the crochet and stuff so mm -hmm. yeah and remember the rag rugs that they used to make and things like that out of clothes and stuff like that like yep. you can do all kinds of things if you if you just know some basic skills you don't even have to know all there is to know about crocheting just learning some right. basic stitches yeah just learn your simple like a lot of your patterns that i you know that i found if you're just wanting a basic simple throw it together afghan you're going to want to know single crochet, maybe half double crochet and a double crochet. Those are, those are three of the simplest ones you can do. There's nothing fancy to them. And you're going to get an, you're going to have an Afghan rather to like quickly. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry. My tongue is swollen or something. I don't know. But um, don't, don't stress out over it. I mean, Take it apart, start over. Take it apart, start over. You're not losing anything. You're not out any money. You're just pulling the yarn apart and then doing it again. Yeah. A lot of it's muscle memory. Once you've got it up here, you're not going to forget it, you know. Yeah. And take your time. Don't don't stress over it. And don't, you know, it's right now isn't necessarily life or death kind of situation. It is important to learn, but it's not a life and death kind of thing yet. Right. So once you've gotten those basic skills, you know, once you get down those three basic stitches and you, you know, the other stitches kind of fall in place relatively easily. Mm -hmm. yeah. May not be for everybody, but for me, it was like, ah, simple. Okay. Yeah. Once you get that, then pick up, you know, if you don't know how to sew, pick up sewing. Sewing's not hard. You can pick up books all over the place on hand stitches. There's lots of different stitches. Um, teach yourself how to hand sew, teach yourself how to get a treadle sewing machine if you can. They still actually sell treadle sewing machines online. I found one today for $89.99. Um, it's a more modern sewing machine, oh. but it's an actual treadle sewing machine. So now the table for it, that was a whole other story. That was like $1,200 for the damn thing. But, you know, it, it's not... You know, oh, I wish I had my grandma's treadle sewing machine. You can have yeah. your own. It's more yeah. modernized and stuff. So believe it or not, you can still find old-fashioned irons. We have six or seven of them where they sit in the fireplace. Yes. You know, it has the little metal stand you set it in. Um, I got the old coal warmer for the bed. Yeah, the coal warmers for the bed. You can find that. So you just got to look. Gotta yeah. look. eBay. eBay. And so you can you can still find the stuff. It's still there. Um, you may pay a little bit more for it now, but 
it's still there. It's not done. You mm -hmm. may know somebody that's pretty good with, with metal or whatever that can make you a simple little iron or something, you know? So I, for me, I overthink things. I do a lot of, I just make things way too hard on myself because I overthink it. Just try not to overthink it. Just relax and do it. And I have tried to teach myself how to knit hundreds of times. I can't do it. <laughs> I can get the pearl down, but I can't get the, I'm just like, okay. Apparently yeah. knitting is not going to be my skill. Crochet, so at least you yeah. you have one of those skills, you know, one. And that's a good tip. Maybe mm -hmm. one is easier for for yeah. somebody than the other is. And mm -hmm. yeah. whichever way it goes, that's fine. It's right. but one of those skills is necessary. I can do a basic crochet. I can do like make a pot holder. You, know? <laughs> if you can make a pot holder. You can make an Afghan. Yeah. Oh, and I started in Afghan and my hands were cramping so bad. And yes. Joe's grandma was like, how are you getting along with that Afghan? And I'm like, okay, I have about this many rows, but I was making it like king size. Length yep. <laughs> so oh, she, that's so going to take a while, but you can do it. So mm -hmm. she, she finished it for me actually. <laughs> yes. um, but that's when I was a lot younger and. Had a it is, she hose. has an aunt who tatted lace. That is beautiful work right there. That is something. I do have a little. I, yeah, he bought me the little scuttle and all that stuff so I can start teaching myself how to do that too. I just haven't done it yet. But um, I thought by her all the crappy stuff. Yeah, he does. Um, I don't. And I'm like, stop. I don't need. Just you case. Know, I don't need this. But um. And if you want to learn how to crochet, if you want to have learn how to knit, have books on hand so that if something, you know, like the scenario does happen and you haven't quite finished out how to figure out all these little, you can still read up on it. You can still be teaching yourself, you know, those skills and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. Those that want to have an opportunity to learn how to crochet or to mm -hmm. knit, if you're wanting to possibly win some free yarn or some seeds. Um, there's some other yes. prizes too. Garden State Gardener on Sundays, six Central, seven Eastern is on, and he does giveaways like almost the whole hour. He highlights some channels through in between there, but he does giveaways and um, doesn't cost anything to enter. Enter you just go on his registration video that he has throughout the week for the next for the following Sunday. So mm -hmm. remember that. Okay. Remember y'all, I'm going to do a quick announcement next week. No live on Wednesday night. Cause it's the night before Thanksgiving and most people are going to be making preparations. I'll be watching some channels. I'm sure. But um, anyway, so, but I, we won't be on here next week. Um, I want to thank Trish and Dudley for coming on and, and stuff. Y'all please make sure you check out their channel. They have some, uh, wonderful canning videos and food processing videos and I look forward to learning more from Trish as, as the time goes on and don't forget again about the prep for it food challenge hashtag prep for it food challenge all you're doing is meals that are from shelf stable items that are zero to five or six to ten dollars uh, for a family um, and I think everybody that enters is going to end up winning a prize. If they do a cooking video for me. Just put that hashtag in the description. And, and you can put it in the title of the video as well if you want. So I thank you all so much for watching. Thanks everybody for coming in and for sharing it out on your community tabs. I was getting notifications from all of the ones that shared it out. I appreciate you very much. And um, learn some new skills, people. Yeah. Always strive to continue bettering your situation and bettering your skills. Yeah. Um, Mouse Toes, thank you once again, my dear, for being on and being a super co-host. Yeah. And it was really good to see some of you um, I hadn't seen in a while, like Stephanie. I haven't seen Stephanie in quite a while, so it was really good to see you. And I know it's early yet, but um, I'm going to go and get ready for watching other people's lives after a while, so... Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. I love you and God bless. And remember, guys, to prep for it. Prep for it all. Have a good one. Bye, guys. Have a good one. And what time is your live stream on Saturdays? 
Um, nine o'clock. Nine Central Standard Time. Okay. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. -bye.